payrolls are about to go negative. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And our lead story today, there's major problems in the labor market. And what I want you to see is how this is indicating that the payroll report is about to go negative in a matter of months. And with it, it's going to bring a recession. We're going to take a look at how the mainstream media is reporting the non-farm payroll report today. And we're going to look at what analysts suggest that the Fed needs to do in response. And then we're going to look at the real data behind the story and why this indicates that a negative negative payroll report is a matter now of only months away. It's over to Bloomberg where we picked this story up with the headline, U.S. hiring moderates, unemployment falls, and mixed signals for Fed. And really there shouldn't be any mixed signals, right? Because when you think about what's going on and we have you know, this problem in the banking system and they're fixated on inflation and we've shown that inflation is indeed going to come down, it's just not designed to come down at the rapid pace the Fed is hoping. And instead they're going to miss all of these indicators and look at this payroll report and I'm gonna show you how they're gonna completely misinterpret it when they have their next meeting. Non-farm payrolls increased 236,000 after an upwardly revised 326,000 advance in February, according to the BLS on Friday. Now, keep in mind, these numbers actually look fairly decent, but it's not the question of what they are now. It's the trend. We'll get into that here in a moment. As the unemployment rate fell to 3.5% and average hourly earnings climbed to 4.2% from a year ago, which it should be actually stated slowed to 4.2% from a year ago below the forecast and there you see it the slowest since june of 2021 so we have a couple issues here you have you know what looks like a decent payroll report you have low unemployment rate and then the but the average hourly earnings is slowing and that perhaps is an indication because as many of you have weighed in the comments you know like look steve can't you see it the wages are not keeping up with inflation we know this but doesn't matter the policy makers i want you to see are going to see that 4.2 percent number and say hey it looks pretty good but against inflation, it's nowhere close. Average hourly earnings on a monthly basis rose at a comfortable pace of 0.3% putting Fed officials now giving them special compensation metrics and a strong payroll gains have given Americans the ability to keep spending. And really, what have we seen? Americans taking on more debt to keep up with inflation. The fact that their wages are rising, which is a good thing, it does not mean it's good against inflation when inflation is indeed rising at a much faster rate. The labor market is cooling down. Now, we're going to look at what these experts are saying. The labor market is cooling down, though not as quickly as the Fed would like. This means a May hike is in play, though just barely. And it's extremely rare that you see the consumer price index come crashing down. It happens typically following a financial crisis or a pandemic when you lock down the global economy. So in normal conditions, we should see kind of a gradual decline in consumer prices, not an elevation elevator shaft down. So of course, experts, I want you to see this, are going to suggest, and this is going to filter into the Fed as they read the newspapers and listen to what people are saying is, hey, you need to keep hiking because the job isn't done yet. And hiring concentrated in a handful of sectors like leisure and hospitality, as well as healthcare, which have been struggling with acute labor shortages. Employers shed jobs and retail trade and temporary help. Now, we talked about the other day the ADP job report, and what did we point out? That the manufacturing sector indeed shed some jobs, and the manufacturing sector often leads the services sector. But what is the key point here? They noted employers shed jobs in retail trade, so that tells us demand is declining and temporary help, and temporary help is a great leading indicator. When that starts to go down, it means that other job losses are coming along the way. And this payroll info is still indicating that job market is on solid ground. Again, you have this, there's this view from all these experts that everything is okay, but the magnitude of the payrolls gain relative to expectation is not significant enough for the Fed to dramatically shift course. Wage growth 
was as expected. I do not see much here that should make the Fed move off their current path. Now, we've talked about this in the past. It is not uncommon, in fact, very normal for the economy to enter recession and actually for the non-farm payroll report to show job gains. So the idea that we're looking at the non-farm payroll report and saying, hey, look, everything's okay. The Fed hasn't finished their job. They need to hike more. We need to actually slow this down to bring inflation down is the wrong answer to the problem because we're looking at a data set that is so lagged that the economy will be far worse shape by the time this thing turns negative, as I'm going to show you in a matter of months, before the Fed figures anything out. Across the board strength, here we go again in the U.S. jobs report, will boost the chance of a 25 basis point hike in May. It should push out the timing of cuts at well. This will allow the Fed to hike in May, but the market will remain focused on other less lagging data and bank earnings because, of course, the non-farm payroll report, my friends, is one of the most, if not the most lagging indicator we have. It's all it's smoothed, it's averaged out, and it's also comes with some made up jobs as we know in the past. So the notion that this should be used as any form of barometer for the Fed to set policy should not happen. But yet we know they're going to and that Powell's gonna stand up in the next press conference and say, hey, look, I have to hike rates because hey, payrolls are looking pretty good. Wages or growth is still there. And I told you I need to cool the economy down and slow this down. But again, they don't seem to realize that payrolls will stay positive even as we hit to a recession and then all of a sudden they'll drop off a cliff and that's why I think we're now a matter of months away let's continue on even the short end treasury yields leapt higher as the amount of extra policy tightening priced in by the swaps market, saying the bond market bought into this report as well. Although because this is a holiday, it is just the futures that is trading this in the next federal open market committee gathering was boosted to around 18 basis points from the current effective Fed funds rate of 4.83%. That suggests a more than two and three chance that officials will bolster the benchmark by a quarter point. And of course, we don't actually know what the they're going to do but i want you to see that you have the experts in line with this how the media is positioning this and now the bond market at least the front end of the curve is buying into this and everyone's saying hey we need to hike rates because things out there are too good and yet what did we see just yesterday in the in the weekly unemployment claims and we're going to get to some charts on this so hang tight we saw that increase there and if we said if that continues to build it will eventually filter back to such lag reports as a non-farm payroll let's continue on as we now see this from zero hedge march payrolls lowest in 27 months so now we get a completely different perspective when we leave the mainstream media behind in line with expectations unemployment rate hourly earnings drop now while total payrolls came in it's just stronger than expected this was thanks to 47,000 in government jobs while private payrolls were only 189,000 missing the consensus of 218 so I want you to put this in perspective these 47,000 government jobs whether you believe they're created or not doesn't matter it's what was printed in the report and that was way over expectations of a mere 5,000 jobs created so I don't know where these jobs are coming from in the government data. I don't know if the BLS is just fudging some numbers or not, but it was strictly because of that print, that 47,000 in government jobs, that this payroll report looked even as decent as it did. And it wasn't just the unemployment rate that improved. The participation rate, which we'll look at here in a bit, did as well, rising from 62.5 to 62.6. The employment population ratio edged up over the month to 60.4%, yet they both remained below their pre-pandemic level. Now, the participation rate here is important because it shows the number, the percentage of eligible people, their age and able to work, that are participating, not just those who have jobs, but those who are looking for one. So as the economy starts to slow down, what should we likely expect to see is that number go up, not because of the total people working again, but the number of percentage of people that are saying, hey, you know what, maybe I need to go back to work. Maybe I need to start looking for a job because the economy is slowing down and the money we have coming in due to inflation isn't enough and we need to bring more money in. So that is not necessarily the sign we want to see. Perhaps the biggest surprise, though, in today's report was a continued drop in hourly earnings 
earnings, which in April came in at 4.2% year over year. Again, notice how Bloomberg presented this as an increase. But again, as we said, it slowed to 4.2 from 4.6 and below 4.3%, which was expected. Now, while on a monthly basis, it did rise 0.3%, which was up from 0.2 last month, that may be due to another modest drop in the average hours worked. Notice we didn't see that from the mainstream media, which dipped from 34.5 to 34.4. So that means fewer people or people that are, are working are getting less hours, means they're taking home less money. And that all transmits into what we're seeing here is a payroll report that's suggesting things are weakening and about to hit a recession and a negative print in the matter of three months. Now let's head over to these charts where I'm gonna make the case for this. And here we start out with the total non-farm payroll. Now I've got this on a year over year rate of change because of this pandemic, part here just really skews the chart but i want you to see we talked about this in yesterday's show just how critical new orders are in terms of demand for labor in the economy what do we see new orders in red declining leading the headline non-farm payroll we see that repeatedly over and over again we know that new order growth is slowing down it's not quite at zero but slowing down suggesting that indeed we should see a slowdown in payroll growth and a continued slowdown now let's take a look as we zero in on this that four week moving average of initial claims in red and we're going to put this against that non-farm payroll report and what do we see that we notice that in various points we see an increase in the red line or initial claims and you can still have very strong non-farm payroll reports but it's not till you start to move up to you know closer to this 400,000 level where you start to really see problems in the non-farm payroll report show up so what this indicates is despite the fact that we're seeing this weekly increase in claims, we can still get a non-farm payroll report, which is then back-ended, used into create monetary policy and puts the Fed way behind the curve as they always are. And I want you to see this. They should be looking at this report and not telling the Fed to hike, but telling the Fed that, hey, maybe things are slowing down here and you better hold off because if you keep going and this report continues to fall, as the unemployment claims suggest, well, it's gonna be negative in a matter of months. And here we can look at average hourly earnings. Well, this isn't the perfect proxy. I wanna show you how this relates to crude oil. Crude oil shown in red, average hourly earnings in blue, both on a year over year rate of change. And crude oil gives us a good approximation of the economy as demand for energy actually should transmit into higher wages. And sure enough, we see somewhat of a trend here as the year over year rate of change in crude oil kind of is trending here, except this dip. We see that wages are trending along with it as crude oil prices come down wage growth starts to slow and here we can see crude oil prices coming way down suggesting that perhaps the economy is indeed slowing and that wages are coming down and even though they mentioned that hey this is good against inflation as many of you know that we have the cpi index up here in red against average hourly earnings in blue there's a huge gap here and we can see that when that happens inflation tends to come down as a result of that. So what we're seeing right now is we've known for a while that wages, while we're happy to see them rising, they're rising nowhere near enough to support prices. If they can't support prices, demand has to come down, inflation comes down with it, layoffs increase, and a recession is almost but a certainty at this point. And now let's talk about the labor force participation rate. In this curious chart I dug out of the depths of my charts, we see something called the velocity of money in the M2 money stock. Now, this is something our friend Jeff Snyder, who I'll be talking to later today when, I, when we talk, uh, record for his channel for the weekend, would tell you is one of the worst things to look at. But it is curious that we see the labor force participation rate have some relationship for the velocity of money. But perhaps there's a better indicator in this is the stock market now. We'll put the stock market in blue, the Wilshire 5000 against the labor force participation rate. And you might look at this and say, there's somewhat of a mere relationship because maybe, just maybe it has something to do with the wealth effect. That as people feel wealthier or have the ability to create more wealth, then we need fewer people participating in the labor market. But if wealth starts to come down, then perhaps we need to see more people head back to work. And if we flip the stock market upside down, 
Well, as we kind of expect, we start to see that relationship here for certain. And what that tells us, if we continue to see weakness in the equity markets, we should see people head back to work or at least head back to try to find jobs. And they're going to go back to work at a time the economy isn't creating the jobs it needs to because in a matter of months i think the payrolls go negative what do you think weigh in the comments love to hear from you i'm your host steve Meter. thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now